Today's tutorial is how to do an Avi pick in RealDraw Pro. Okay, this is my style. This is how I do them. You can vary any part of this process along the way to make your own style or use this one if you like it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import a background. I happen to have one ready. Imagine that here on my desktop. And let me grab it. And there we go. Be able to see with some doves. It's 160 by 220 already. I resized that in GIMP. Now you'll see it's a little different size than the square here. Just go to Project, Trim Canvas, and there's your size. You're all set. Now, what I want to do first is show you how to make a frame. Okay? So what we do is we do File, Import, the same picture again only we make it a little smaller with the sliders here just take it down to 150 by 206 say OK now you'll see how it's sitting in the upper right hand or left hand corner like that now what you do is you go object arrange center on page okay so what we can do is click on that center part go to bevel click say for example this one try them all if you like see what you like best and as you see that gives you a little bit of an indent now click on the outside which is your larger picture see the nice thing about real draw pro is it works in objects not layers so it makes it a lot less cumbersome than gimp to do these same things plus you can resize things on the fly you'll see what I mean very shortly okay now on this outside frame to give it that little bit more you click one of these up on the top row now that gives you your frame okay we're gonna save that frame uh, we're gonna go project trim canvas and then project flatten canvas so that gives us one piece. So there's our frame. Now all we have to do is, if you wish, add an Avi pick. So I'm going to do File, Import. I have this one ready. Say OK. Now I can take this, position it to the bottom. But the nice thing is, I can make it smaller. Or I can make it larger. Whatever you wish however you want it to look I'll keep it about that size there now if you want to enhance that so it looks better go up to bitmap effects simple sharpen then bitmap effects sharpen more it just makes it nice and clear the picture in the grand scheme of things okay make sure you click your picture again you can go down to shadows and effects if you wish you can add a little bit of a drop shadow to it just shows which way the light shining on you you can add varying degrees you can add a bottom shadow upper shadows to the left whatever you like just try different ones see which one works best for you now I'm gonna move that up just a bit off the bottom of the frame and there we go so now you have the start of a new one now I'll just go project trim canvas project flatten canvas say yes now that is one picture now what you can do is you can add your name so over here add artistic text click that left click then left click on your picture and this will come up in here is all the fonts on your system choose one that you like I happen to like this one here monotype Corsiva it's the one I generally use Take it up to about 50, 51, make it bold, and add your text. Say OK. Now your text is here. You can position it however you like. The nice thing is you can go Object, Arrange, Center on Page, use your arrow keys, and raise it up so that you're centered. Just make sure you don't raise it past the outside of the box. Now, the nice thing with this is you can stretch those words. 
you can do whatever you like with them. Move them around, stretch them, whatever. Now, what I like to do with this is go up here to your shape tool. It'll put a series of boxes around. Now, whatever box you grab and push, it will push your letters in that direction. So this gives it an arch. You can give it a severe arch if you wish. And then grab your corners, pull them down. Then take your center, push it back up again. So it gives you a nice curve. Go back up, click your object selector, and there's your lettering. Okay, you can move it up or down with your arrow keys, center it however you like. Now, if you wish, you can make go over here to this side to color and change the color of those letters. Click here, choose whatever color you like those letters to be. Another nice thing about this program is you have library A and library B. You can take any of these to color your letters. I like this one here, gives it a nice little metal effect. You can go to shadow, put a little shadow behind your lettering to give it some depth. Now the nice thing here I like to do as well is go to Alt C and while hold I'm sorry, Control C and while you're holding the control key down hit V about five times. And now it pops those letters out. Go back up to your object selector, click on your letters, position them where you want. Gives you a kind of a layered effect. Go to Project, Trim Canvas, Project, Flatten Canvas, say yes, and there you have an Avi Pick. File, Save As, save it as a JPEG, name it, and now you have an Avi Pick. Okay, next I'll show you how to make your own background for it rather than have a picture. Okay, this way here you just go control N, it gives you a new page. Now what you want to do is go project, size and color, make your width 160, your height 220, say OK. Now Go over here to your left, your add rectangle. Go to your upper left hand corner, left click and hold, make a box. Do project, trim canvas. Now you have a canvas to make your background and, and you can make it whatever color you want. Again, just click over here on your color, click the red box and make it whatever color you like. I'll make this one blue. Say OK. Now you want to add some texture to that. Go over here to your surface skin. If it's not in this box down here, it'll be along this side on the right. Click surface skin. Click the arrow. Now you can decide what you want it to look like. So I'm going to try ridges. There's your ridges. You can vary the intensity on those ridges, so it can be subtle, it can be bold. That choice is yours. The bottom below it is the transparency and the size of that grid. So you can make it, as you see, there's four rows of them, or you can go all the way to the top where it's a huge ridges. Somewhere in the middle usually works out well. Okay, so now you have your basic background. What you do is you do File, Save As, save it as a JPEG, name it, and click Save. 
Now again, just like before, what I do is I do File, Import, the same picture again. Take it down to 150 or so. Now you can make this border any size you wish. Just make that picture inside smaller if you want a bigger border. Make it bigger if you want a smaller border. Okay. Say OK. Now do Object, Arrange, Center on Page, and the same steps as before. Add your bevel to drop it in. Go to the outside one. You can do that to puff it out. Okay, or if you like, add some lights. Go over here to your right, click lights, click on the outside box, say enable 3D lights, and there you go. Add another one, add another one. This is also helpful when making textures kind of like a duplicity here and add another one so that gives you that kind of gives you that bold effect come up here see object selector there's your picture not bad if you want you can go to the center one <coughs> excuse me and add a spotlight rotate it up raise it play with the buttons play with it all and, and just see how it works for you there's 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 buttons on here to increase and decrease the intensity the size the angle position it with the middle one go back to your object selector and there you go now go to project trim canvas project flatten canvas and now you have your frame again just like the last time import bring your picture in size it to what you wish there you go do your, you can do your bitmap effects, simple just bitmap effects, sharpen more, and there you go. And that's all there is to it. Just do project, trim canvas, project, flatten canvas. Say yes. Like before, add your lettering to the top, and you've got yourself. And have you picked that way? So those are the two ways that I'm aware of to do it. There's many more. I'm sure with some experimenting, you'll be able to discover them on your own. Okay, we'll do the shape tool. I'm gonna kick this up just so it's not on my head. Okay, go back to your object selection. Library B, control C once, holding control V five times. Project trim canvas, project flatten canvas, yes. There's your final AVI pick. Save as, do it as a JPEG. AVI pick two. Okay, have you pick to save. And that's all there is for the lesson today. Have yourselves a great day. I hope this is helpful.